Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in for today's video. Today, I'm going to jump right into it, and uh, we're going to go through and make a beat on the MPC Studio Mark II. I'm going to show you guys my workflow. I'm going to show you guys how I'm making music with this machine. This is not the right or wrong way to do it. This is just the way I do it and uh, follow along. I will be explaining uh, how I'm doing certain things. Now, if you guys are MPC One or any other M machines that you guys are using, this is still going to be helpful because the same thing you do on the MPC Studio Mark II is the same thing you do on the MPC One, MPC Live. Everything is the same. The only difference is obviously I have a big ugly mouse right here. So enough talking, let's jump right into it and let's have some fun. Uh, one last thing I'm gonna mention is, if you guys find value in this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up during the, the video and also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not subscribed to this channel already. So let's go ahead and have some fun. So right here I have a session and in this session, uh, my beats per minute or my BPM is set to, well, actually I haven't set it yet, but I'm gonna set it to 80 beats per minute. The way I'm setting my beats per minute in the hardware, I just hold down, tap tempo, and as I'm holding it down, I can switch the dial and it lets me adjust my tempo. Uh, lately, I like working in the lower 80s. I don't know why. I used to always work in 90s, but now I'm just really enjoying lower 80s beats per minute. It's got a really nice uh, groove to it. The way I'm making beats with the MPC Studio Mark II is I'm enjoying just having my splice account open and just being able to drag over samples. Like this has been so fun. I have my collection on splice. If you guys haven't seen how I use splice, make sure you guys check out that video. Uh, you guys get more information on this. This is awesome. Uh, I have this drum break right here that I, I want to chop up. So the way I just, you know, I grab my, my drum breaks and I just drag them over to my sample pool. And now I have my, you know, I got my samples right here and I have that drum break. And I want to chop up that drum break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to mode and sample editor. Once I'm on sample editor, I have my drum loop right here. And... Right here, uh, I can either chop this up manually, you know, you go to chop mode and you're able to start slicing it up manually. But in this case, since it's already a perfect loop, I'm gonna go, instead of manual, I'm gonna go to, uh, I'm gonna go to beats per minute. And on the beats per minute, it's gonna give me time division 16 slices. So I already have it all sliced up for me. Awesome, so if you guys are sampling a live drum break from a vinyl record, it's gonna be the same process. Just make sure you have a perfect loop that you're looping and then you go to your beats per minute and it slices it up, it's, it will slice it up for you. If not, you guys can also, instead of beats per minute, go to manual and you, can, you guys can manually start slicing this up yourself, whatever is more comfortable for you. But in this case, we're gonna do beats per minute. Uh, once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new program hit do it, and I'll go to my main menu, and on track one, I know you guys can't really see this uh, small LCD screen, but I'm on track one, uh, I will go ahead and go to my program browser, and on program browser, we already created that program right now with those drum slices, so it's already created, so we just go to, we'll make sure on track one, and we hit program select, and we scroll over, and there's our live drums that we chopped up. Awesome. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to lay down a simple two bar drum loop uh, to start with. And you guys already know I there isn't a right or wrong way of making a beat, but I like to start with a drum break just so I can have a rough idea of where I'm going to take this towards. And the way I want to lay down a sequence is I keep it very simple. I'm not good as a finger drummer, so I don't get too technical and get too complicated. I try to do everything very simple and smooth, so maybe this is gonna be helpful for you guys. Uh, I like to start with my kick, but before I'm gonna lay all this stuff down, I'm gonna, I wanna hear what I got going on right here. So here's my kick. That's a hi-hat, snare, hi-hat with a kick, kick. 
I want to look from my hi-hats. So I got two dry hi-hats right here. And then I have a open hat. Will open half with, with with a kick. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with a kick, and I'm gonna quantize. Make sure TC is turned on, so that's gonna be a time correction or quantize is turned on, and I'm gonna quantize just the downbeat of the kick. Once I start adding the ghost notes, I will take uh, quantize or time correct off. So right now we're only gonna lay down the kick. Now I'm going to take quantize off. Awesome. And I know it probably sounds a little choppy right now, but trust me, once we start sampling and start layering all this, it, it, you're, it's not going to be as choppy as it sounds right now. So, so I'm going to go back to my main menu. I'm going to go to track two and we're going to sample something right now and start go, go through with our sample. And let's see what we have right here. I'm going to go to YouTube. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose this song right here. It sounds really good. Excuse me if I'm going to have to skip this part. I don't want to get a copyright. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain a little bit on the sampling part, is on my MPC, I'm going to switch over to the MPC. If you go to mode and go to sampler, you have your sampler right here. You don't have to do anything with the clicker. The only thing you have to do with the clicker right now is select if you want to just sample or do your slice mode or pad hold. In this case, I'm gonna go to slice mode, and every time I hit a slice, it's gonna start sampling. And every time I hit that slice again, it's gonna create a slice. Uh, it's on slice mode. I've made videos on this, so you guys check out those videos if you don't understand the slice mode method as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play right here, and let's get started. Después de tan corazón. Awesome. All right, cool. So now I go over here, stop, and I'm going to say keep. So we kept that. I should have named it. I did not name it, but it's all good. Uh, once we're, we created those slices, we could, could just go to main, and on main, I go to track two and go to program select, and I scroll through, and now we have that new sample. Again, I should have named that. I'm going to go ahead and name it. Double click right here, and I'm going to name it chops. Um, I know I did not chop this up exactly on the grid. I, I've, you guys noted as I was slicing this up, I was a little off timing. Usually I'll go in and I'll adjust the start point of these slices and get all perfect with it. But in this case, I'm going to just rock with this. Uh, I'm going to see what I came up with, with the imperfections. And maybe it sounds good, maybe it doesn't, but it's okay. We can go back and adjust or start an endpoint later. Uh, what I'm going to do, since I have that drum break already playing, I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to just start having fun and seeing what I come up with, if there's any inspiration that strikes me, and go with it. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what we have right here. <laughs> Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> this is going to be really cool. Uh, one thing I do notice is it's a little low on the volume versus the drum break. So what I'm going to do to raise the volume of this uh, sample, yes, you could go right here on your program fader and raise it up, but I do not want to do that. I'd rather just normalize this audio. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to mode, sample editor, and on sample editor right here, uh, I'm going to get off of chops. I'm going to just go to trim. And on slice one, go down where it says all and make sure that says all. I'm going to go right here where it says normalize. Hit do it. Awesome. And normalize the whole entire sample. Now I go back to main and it should be a little louder now. This was all right, cool. Obviously, is not on timing with the beats per minute. Uh, I get this question asked a lot. Uh, how do you go about adjusting your beats per minute? Uh, how do you warp? I don't like to warp audio and the MPC. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like what it does. 
I rather go to towards a different route. If you're slicing your pads up on the downbeat and, and on quarter notes or 16th notes, if you're doing your slices like that, I will just go to that mode, sample or program editor. And on my program editor, I will me mess with the uh, master semi tune. And I will do my best. It doesn't have to be perfectly on beat. I will just have fun with these chops. I'm gonna lower down the pitch. I'll probably go to minus four and just kind of try to match it with the tempo as I'm adjusting this tune right here. So let's see what this gives us. Yeah, yeah okay, I much rather go this route. Again, since I chopped it up in quarter notes, I'm able to just play around and jump around different pads and it's gonna sound good. It's gonna sound like it's on time. Now, if one of these uh, pads I was way off with my, my slice, then yes, it's gonna sound off and I can go and adjust the start point. But I like what this is giving me right now. So let's have some fun and, and see what we come up with. All right, uh, this sounds really good. Any direction I'm, I'm gonna take it right now is gonna sound good. One thing I am gonna mention, as you guys notice, I sampled over a, a vocal. I love sampling and throwing vocal clips at the end of my bars. That sounds awesome. I, I enjoy that because it just adds like, I don't know, it just kind of adds a little more character to the, the beat. And because I pitched it down, it almost sounds a little darker and I'm, I'm, I like how that sounds, so. All right, that sounds awesome. The only thing, it, it is a little choppy. I'm gonna go to tempo on my tempo of my master session. I'm gonna bump it up a few uh, beats per minute. I'm gonna probably try 82. Let's see how that sounds. Right now we have a, 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 an, a really good sounding two bar loop. And this could get a little boring and it sounds great, but after hearing it for a few repetitions, it could get a little too much and it's not that fun. So what I'm gonna do right now is, this is what I would do on my MPC one, but I'm gonna do it right here. I'll go to file and we're going to make this, instead of two bars, we're gonna make it into four bars. So in order for me to do that, I go to sequence and I'm gonna go to double length. And what that's gonna do, I'm gonna zoom out what that's gonna do is it just copied and pasted it to another two bars, so now it's four bars long. So we might have the first two bars sounding the way we did it, and maybe the last two bars we can throw in some extra, you know, I go to note repeat and and just have some fun and add a variation to these last two bars. This is cool. I like what I did right here, but I don't like these right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete these and I'm gonna just loop this. I wanna focus on these last two bars. So as you guys can saw, as you guys saw right there, I just grabbed the looper right here and I wanna just focus. As a matter of fact, I like what I did right here. I'm gonna focus on the last bar. Oh yeah, I'm gonna throw that in right there. And let's go ahead and do that. Go to overdub and just hit play. I'm not gonna hit start play. Awesome. 
Awesome. So as you guys can see, I'm, I'm you know, trying to switch it up a little bit so it's not too repetitive. Uh, I like how this sounds. Once I have my drums and I have the sample and I kind of like the direction that I'm going with, uh, I'll go ahead and add a uh, mother ducker to the sample program. I'm gonna add it to the entire program. In order for us to do that, right here, you got two faders right here on your left-hand side. You got your pad and then you got your entire program, which I call it chops. So I'm gonna go to the entire program and I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna add, where you at, a mother ducker, hit select. Cool, that's right there. And now I'm gonna go to my tracks. I'm gonna go to track one. And on track one, I gotta put a mother ducker input on the kick. So what I'm gonna do is right here on this kick, pad one, I'm gonna add mother ducker input. So I'm gonna go right here, dynamics, and mother ducker input. Hit select, make sure that's engaged. Cool, that's there. Go back to track two, and on track two, I have mother ducker right here on the entire program, and let's hear it with this and, and see if we have to adjust this. <laughs> So as you guys can see, this right here is in sequence one. I just started a, uh, my session, have sequence one. I got the main idea out. Once I feel comfortable with this, I'm gonna go to file and I'm still not that comfortable with this software. I'm still getting to know it. Well, right here, right here it is. I go to a sequence and I'm going to insert, where is it, uh, copy, copy sequence and I will paste it onto sequence two. I'm gonna name this and I'm gonna just name this verse, hit do it. And once we go ahead and do that, now we're on that verse sequence that we duplicated. So we're on sequence two. Now I wanna go back to sequence one, hold down shift and then go to track select. Now you're on sequence select. So I go back to uh, sequence one. Once I'm right there, uh, I can go ahead and do something different right here. So it could be like the intro. Uh, sequence. So what I'll do is I'll go to my track select. I'll go to my drums, which is track one. Uh, I should be naming these tracks. I don't know why I'm not naming them right now, but make sure you guys are naming these tracks. Matter of fact, I'll do it right now. This is my drums. Cool. And uh, on my drums, I will go ahead and take out the drums. Just click that, erase all that, and maybe our intro can start like this. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. So as you guys can see, I have my intro, my verse, and now that we have something starting to shape up, now once I have this right here, one thing I like to do is once I have the, the beat kind of flowing already for me, I'll go into my settings, I think is the oh yeah, preferences, and on preferences, I go to general, and on general, I turn on vintage mode. I like the MPC 60 sound, and I hit okay. Uh, once I do that, uh, before I jump any further, some people were asking like, what does that do? Uh, the MPC 60 or these vintage mode, uh, where, where am I right here, um, preferences, if we go to general, this vintage mode, you got different emulations. So any of these settings you go is trying to emulate some of this vintage hardware or the old school hardware to give you that sound. If you want that lo-fi sound from the MPC 60, MPC 3000, is click on any of these and this is going to change the entire sound of this project. Now, me personally, I've never used any of those machines that are on those settings. So I cannot tell you guys, oh, it sounds identical or it doesn't sound good. You know, I don't know that. All I do know is that it does something beautiful to my session. It sounds awesome. <laughs> Um, that's pretty much it right here, guys. This is how I'm doing beats on the MPC Studio Mark II. Uh, one thing I am gonna say about this is I'm enjoying this workflow because like I mentioned, I have everything right at my fingertips. I got my splice account right here and I'm able to drag over samples. I got my you know, YouTube right here. And 
one last thing a lot of people were asking me is how am I sampling from YouTube? So I'm going to show you guys how I have this set up and how I'm sampling directly from YouTube. This is probably not going to work for everybody. If you guys want to skip out of the video, go ahead and do so. But for those of you guys who want to know how, to, how I do this, stick around. I have the Apollo interface. I don't know if you guys can see it right here, but I'm using the Apollo interface. And the way I'm doing this is on the Apollo interface, if I go to my settings, my uh, I'm going to my IO matrix. And on my IO matrix, this Apollo interface is a uh, eight channel input, or actually it's like a 16 or no, wait, it's a 32 channel input. Um, what I'm doing, I'm obviously not using 31 and 32. These channels I'm not using at all. If you guys got the two input um, Apollo interface, just the, the dual input, I think you can do the same thing right there too. If you're not using your inputs, make sure you're not using those inputs. I go to these inputs and in the IO and you got your channel, which is channels 31, 32. You got the device is the Apollo. And on my inputs, I'm choosing, I go right here, I hit input and I go, you got all these different inputs. I go to monitor left and on the channel 32 input, I go to monitor right. But the reason why I have that and, the, and that's how it's working is because I'm, I'm telling the interface to receive audio from channels 31 and 32. So when I go back into my MPC sampler, if I go to mode and go to sampler, now I set my sampler channels inputs. I'm gonna go to input uh, right here on my stereo and I'm gonna go to channels 31 and 32. And as you guys can see, I have signal coming in. because I told the software or the uh, Apollo to receive channels uh, that is monitoring from the device. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, this is probably gonna be for Apollo users only, <laughs> but uh, that's how I'm doing it. I'm sure there's apps or different ways to do it. Uh, so if you guys do know of some, let us know down in the comments. So again, thank you so much. If you guys have not already done so, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll catch you guys on our next video. Peace. Peace.